Good morning, Tahar Kadosh. Meruchim Abaim to everyone today, Wednesday, the 17th day of Shevat, corresponding to the 8th day of February. Today's class graciously sponsored by Elias Kababie and family, his beloved brother, Yaakov Ben Rosa Aleva Shalom. Additionally, by Nathan Yadvar, Le'ayu Nishmat, Albert Ben Yaakov. Additionally, Le'ayu Nishmat, Michael Ben Le'a, Aleva Shalom. Additionally, today's class dedicated to the Fuashelema of Rabbi Shimon Eliyahu Ben Fortune Mazal and Hannah Batsima Feiga. In to the words of Torah, they all have a Fuah Shelema. Amen. Today is the Hilula of the great Rabbi Chaim Palachi. Amen. 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 Uh, for those who follow our class and are here with us at the synagogue, usually around the days of Rosh Chodesh or right around the time of the holidays, we always quote from the great Hacham. So Baruch Hashem, I did some research and I was able to find a lot of fascinating concepts about the life of this great Sephardic giant that lived in the 1800s in Turkey. That unfortunately, these days has been affected by a massive earthquake that created a tremendous amount of disaster in that particular area in the world, uh, amounting to thousands of casualties, and even in areas where there was a Jewish life in the past, wow. regretfully, is on the ruins today. There was a video floating as uh, the rabbi from Istanbul was able uh, with government permission to travel to one of the cities to redeem the Sefer Torahs that they were in the synagogues and this Sefer Torah are dating several centuries uh, back. So by Ezzet Hashem we hope that Akadosh Baruch Hu revealed his infinite mercy Amen. among Amen. humanity. Amen. Amen. So I'll give you some of the biography I'll say some words attributed to the great Hacham, and today we're gonna to learn together a few messages that the rabbi writes specifically for this particular time of the year. Baruch, atta Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, she'akol nihiyabit baruch. Amen. Amen. Okay, the great Hacham was born in the year 1788 and passed away in the year 1869. I know people who actually went to visit the kever of Rabbi Chaim Palachi. Uh, there was a group that went from Mexico not long ago, a whole group, an entourage, with Minyan, with Shiaurim, with Sefer, and kosher food, obviously. And one of the purposes of the trip was not really to visit Turkey, but actually to go to some of the Kevarim of the Sadiqim, among them Rabbi Eliyahu Kohen, the author of Shevet Musar, and obviously the highlight of the tree was to visit Rabbi Chaim Palachi, alav shalom. So he's buried in the city of Izmir, which uh, uh, one or two years ago, I wanted to go there, uh, and there was a trip organized from Brooklyn to go and visit the great Hacham, but on that time, there was some type of revolution going on in Turkey, so regretfully the trip had to be canceled. Yeah. But I figure maybe I go straight to Izmir, so I discover that there is not really an airport in Izmir, so you gotta fly to Istanbul, and then you gotta drive four to six hours to this place in Izmir, but definitely to visit Sadikim, yeah. and if we went to the Ukraine, we can definitely go to Turkey as well. So the great Sadiq, which was not only the Dayan of the city, was also called the Hacham Bashi. When you call the name Hacham Bashi, he's not a wise guy, but actually he was the Hacham of all of the Hachamim of the country. Yeah. So he composed over yeah. 70 Sefarim, 70 books, even some say 72 books, in all aspects of uh, Torah. And it says that by midnight, he was already up, and from midnight till sunrise, we learn Torah, uninterruptedly. Where does he get such a concept? After David and Melech, there were many Sadiqim that they will get up in the middle of the night. As the Basuk says in the book of Tehillim, Hasot Laila, Akum Leodot Lach, Al Kol Mishpetesit Kecha. 
in the middle of the night I will get up to praise Hashem for the beauty of our Torah and they will remain learning till sunrise. And he says in one of his sefarim, Rabbi Haim Palaji says, I like to summon two witnesses. One is called Shamaim, one is called Eres. One is called the heavens, one is called the earth. Where does he learn such a thing? From Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu also says, Ha'azinu ha'shamayim etc. And it says, from the day of my life, until the age of 20 and change, I was not involved in any matter related to the life in this world. My main goal and commitment was to learn Torah in an uninterrupted interrupt, interrupted fashion. You have to understand, and I speak now from experience, that once you become a rabbi, you know, the learning and the flexibility that people have is not the same. And I said this in the past, I have my day planned, but I don't have what is going to be God's plans. So then I need to make room for God's plans on things unexpectedly I gotta deal with. That's already happened today. I woke up with another meeting or two lined up already for today. When I went to sleep last night, these meetings and these messages did not exist. Wow. But they came overnight, and now I know that I need to squeeze it in in my already busy day. The behind Palachi, before he became the great luminary, he devoted himself to non-stop Torah uh, learning. Now, Rabino Haim Palachi discusses the concept mm -hmm. of Parnasa. And I pick this one to be the first one because everybody needs and everybody wants Parnasa. So it says as follows, why sometimes Parnasa is not with the same level of abundance that may exist in the past. And it says that the, there is a certain level of neglect in the world when it comes to the learning of Mishnayot. Many times, you hear Gemara class, Talmud class, Daf Yomi class. You barely hear Mishnah class. My only Mishnah class is with the ladies once a week. It says if a person will devote more time to learn Mishnayot, which in a certain way <coughs> is simpler and less complicated than Gemara, the Parnasa will start flowing in the life of the person. And the question is then, what's the connection between Mishnah and Parnasa. So we need to begin to say, Mishnah Otiot Neshama. Everybody knows this, but it says, Mishnah Gimatriya Parnasa. Wow. It says, the more Mishnah you learn, the more Parnasa comes to visit the person. So Beli Nether, in honor of Rabbi Haim Palachi, we're gonna to try to learn one Mishnah a day in the class. Something that we don't really uh, do. Comes Rabbi Haim Palachi and it says, Whoever he becomes meticulous of not speaking in the synagogue, any type of conversation that is not conducive or permissible inside of the synagogue, Akadosh Baruch Hu will merit this in the, per in the person's life to have longevity, to be able to see his future generations. Whatever he does, Hashem will give him a dosage of blessing and no parnasa will be lacking from his table and after his life in this world his body and neshama will be able to rest peacefully and his body will be protected from the natural decay that usually affects the life of humans additionally says behind palachi that a person should train themselves of never Curse. Never order a curse to someone. Cursing, overall, is forbidden. And cursing other people, it's even a bigger avon. It says the opposite. Don't utilize the weapon, which is your mouth, to curse, but actually use the weapon that God gave you to give blessings to people, to say positive words uh, for people, etc. Also, the behind Falachi writes, the benefit of learning Zohar, that's something that we do in the class. Akadosh Baruch Hu will make sure that the Bishim on Bar Yochai will be one of your advocates in Shemaim. Why? Because the way we do now, when a person talks and learns about the lives of the Sadiqim, 
this particular sadiq that you talked about suddenly becomes your new friend in Shamayim and keeps an eye on you. Now, says Rabbi Haim Palachi, it says, as he said before, always try to say something positive. So it says Rabbi Haim Palachi, he composed a prayer for the benefit of the Jewish people. And it says as follows, and then we're going to switch over to the many small messages that he gives for this particular time of the year, the time of the Shovavim. And it says, Ribbono Shel Olam, Master of the Universe, is there in the world a nation that loves you so much like Am Israel? Am Israel, besides fulfilling your commandments, your misvot, etc., they make extra efforts in order to satisfy your halachic requirements. What does he speak about? The topic that we learned yesterday. What was the topic that we learned yesterday? The topic of Melave Malka, the fourth meal in Mosai Shabbat. And it says, not only that they do three Saudot on Shabbat, not only that they eat Sauda Shelishit, even though they finish eating lunch earlier, but not only they do that, but actually they do Sauda Revi'it, they do the fourth meal known as Bemilabe Malka, not because they want to eat, not because they need to eat, to eat, but actually they only eat to satisfy a halachic requirement. Yani, we fulfill the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot that says, Batel resoncha mi pene resono. There is a formula in the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot that says, nullify your will, to fulfill the will of Hashem. And I, 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 and I like that statement because Mosai Shabbat, I'm sure that many of us don't want to eat. Believe me, if I, am, if I have the halachic power not to eat on Mosai Shabbat, I will not most likely eat on Mosai Shabbat, especially in the winter. <coughs> that Shauda finishes late, Shabbat finishes early, and then you need to eat again. And there is a concept of doing Melave Malka within the four hours that Shabbat finishes. But I do make the effort, like everybody does the effort, only for one reason, to fulfill the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And you know what the Mishnah says? When a person puts on the side their will in order to do the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when you want something, when I want something, the Mishnah says, even though Shamayim did not give me an approval for that, it says, Batel resoncha mi pene resoncha, que deshe y hace resoncha, kir soncha. It says, make his will your will, so your, his will will become your will. I know it's a game of words, I repeat it again. Make his will instead of your will, so his will becomes your will. Versteis? Thank you. Next. And yet it says they have the beautiful shukhan set up with happiness and with gladness and they want to do it even to fulfill your misvot. And it says not only that, is there a nation in the world that praises you even after they eat? Saying grace, okay? The world praises God before eating. What about praising God after eating? The Jewish people do it. The rest of the world, they do it before. They don't do it after. They do it before. Praise the Lord. Right? I don't know more than that. Relax. Anyways. And it says the same way that Akadosh Baruch Hu, Olam, it says the same way that the Jewish people do things only because you ask for it. So when a Jew or when the nation needs something and they ask for something, give it to them in your honor. That's exactly the prayer that the Bihaim Palaji uh, wrote. And he goes further. He talks about marriages. Marriage, nice, small power. For some reason, the pages got stapled exactly in the page that talks about marriage. Oh, Maybe you no. shouldn't speak about it. No, but the staple is between two lines, not in the word. So I'm able to fold the pages and read it. Unbelievable. 
Imagine you, you, you staple, I only pay attention to the front page. I don't see what happened in page number four. Miracles of miracles in page number four, which is the one that I'm going to talk about now, the staple is between words. So I'm able to bend the page and I'm able to see the word that says, it is forbidden, that's the word that was stapled. Oh, yeah. It is forbidden to cause to your wife pain or suffering in the way that you talk to her. I would need this to say that abusing your wife or raising your voice or, 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 or raising your hand, God forbid, that there is no permissibility whatsoever. And it says, Rabbeinu Ha'ari, a person who raises their voice against their wife, even though from their spiritual power, they have the power of achieving divine Ruach HaKodesh, that Ruach HaKodesh leaves the person for the fact that the person raises his voice against his wife. Obviously, if the husband raises the hand against the wife, then you call the police, and that's basically the way you settle the matter. But when it comes to raising the voice, I had a case, one of the cases that came my way today is about an abusive husband. That's the case that is on my breakfast today. I'm not sure which breakfast I'm gonna have first, an apple and cheese or uh, dealing with this abuse case. Obviously, abuse case takes priority. What happens if it's reversed the other way? The if woman it's the, the opposite yeah. that the wife abuses the husband, yeah. that's also wrong. <laughs> that's also wrong. There's no difference. Not the bottom line, what did he say? Never curse anyone. Never raise your voice against anyone. Instead of using the power of your voice and your words in a negative way, use them to bless. I told you the sticker that is in my office. If you have nothing yeah, nice to say, say, say nothing. Don't say anything. That's it, stay quiet. Some people, it's a misva for them to stay quiet all the time. No, be it. Okay. Uh, I'd like now to switch. For today is good. I'd like to switch now and to learn, actually, from the writings of Rabbi Haim Palachi. Uh, there are a lot of things that he wrote, especially in the topic of Shovavim. As we know, this week's, six weeks from Shemot till next Shabbat, Mishpatim, are six weeks in the year that although the gates of Teshuvah are always welcome and are always open, but there are six weeks from Perashat Shemot till next Shabbat, that Shamaim has like an amnesty program to forgive the person and to welcome the person's Teshuvah of sins created by transgressing two sins from the Torah. Very serious and dangerous sins. Number one, in the marriage relationship, the Harata Mishpacha, family purity. In the men's department, immorality through the Berit Milah. That's called Zera Levatala, wasting Zera. I discussed this topic several times in the past few weeks, and I'm not gonna go back, but I think everybody in this room is an adult and understands the prohibition of a man fooling around with the Berit Milah. Rabbi Haim Palachi writes a lot of deeper explanations on this particular topic, which some of them I said it in the beginning of the season, but I have some good news to tell you. That this Sunday afternoon, we are going to be making the Tikkun HaShovavim. Sunday afternoon, starting at three o'clock, with Rabbi Meir Eliyahu that's flying now from Israel, and your humble servant. It will be a four or five hour prayer with a lot of tikkunim. Tikkun for the eye, tikkun for the milah, tikkun for the hand, tikkun for the saliva, and tikkun for the throat of the person. Don't ask me to explain what that means. You come on Sunday afternoon, and we're gonna be doing that mega prayer starting at 3, 3.30, all the way till seven o'clock. Some people, it is not mandatory, but some people fast that day, and they put on talet and tefillin for minha, and we do a lot of prayers, hakafot, shofar, we blow the shofar, 
we give a specific amount of sedaka, and this is the tikkun base on the rashash and the benishai. And I encourage a person who never did it to do it at least once in your lifetime. I myself have been doing this for several years. There are different tikkunim of the shovavim in the Dil Synagogue and in uh, Sha'are Sion. They do a different tikkun. They do the Ta'anit Dibur all day, not talking, reading three consecutive times the book of Tehillim, etc. We tried it in the past and for some reason it didn't work as well as perhaps works in different areas. But this one, Sunday afternoon tikkun, it's full packed room in the Kolel. We do that tikkun specifically in the room of the Kolel, second floor Midrash, not to disturb the regular minyanim of the uh, synagogue. So those who would never did it and would like to do it, this Sunday afternoon there is a flyer being prepared, and by Ezat Hashem we do all this kind of tikkunim, including a specific amount of tzedakah, and the hakafot, and the shofarot, the way the mekubalim do in Eres Israel. So now, people are listening to what we are saying, which is fine. It's no problem with that. Now, the question is, what can I do to remedy such a sin? Let's say that a person today is more careful than the person may have been in the past. So how do I remedy the sins of the past? Even though today I am not doing that sin, Baruch Hashem, but what happened with the sins that I did when I was maybe 18, 20, 21, 22, 25 years old? What happens with all the sins? So the behind Palachi does bring a certain formula besides the tikkun of Shavavim on Sunday afternoon, but actually he says certain things that a person should be careful to observe them properly, and that additional level of observing the things that we already done. We're not gonna say nothing that we are not doing already. And if somehow we find things that we are not doing, so maybe today is the day to start doing them better or to start doing it to begin with. So first he brings different matters that a person should read, but I like to maybe go to the uh, basic practical aspects of misvot. So it says, number one, going to the mikveh. Go to the mikveh. That's simple. I think that people go to the mikveh, especially in honor of Shabbat, Many go in honor of Rosh Hashanah, in honor of Kippur. Many thousands go more in honor of Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Some people go every day. Some people go once a week. Some people go once a month. But one of the things he says is, go to the mikveh and have the kavanah that by you purifying yourself in the mikveh, the sin that you did with the berit milah, zera levatala, or keri, or an accident in the nighttime. A person went to sleep in a way, woke up in a different way. So have the kavanah the way you do it, number one. Number, why also it says, because when a sin of this magnitude is done, automatically it creates angels. It creates angels of darkness. And the idea is not to fear anyone, but it's called zera levatala. What's the meaning of zera? Most people explain it as seed, but not only zera means seed. Zera means seed, but why it's called zera? Because zera means children. Zera shel kayama. May you have children that remain alive. So the word zera affects the children. The children that were supposed to be born, and yet now they were wasted. Remember I mentioned a few weeks ago why sons do not go to the burial of the father? Yeah. For this yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. If you want to listen to it, search in one of the classes of itorah.com. Another one he says, read Shema properly. What does it mean, reading the Shema properly? Okay, I Hazakovaru. Thank you, Hakambashi. You talk, I eat. What's the meaning of Kavana? Kavana means understanding. 
you eat properly. I was protecting your life because you're eating and you're talking, so it's dangerous. Say No, true, true. 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 Anyways, so what does it mean in Kavana? Pronounce the words properly. Don't do anything while you're reading the Keriyat Shema. Don't do nothing. Just read the Shema from the book. If you can say it with Ta'amim, better. Pronounce the certain words that are important to pronounce them properly. For example, what the Shema says, Ul Obdo Bechol Levavchem, to serve God with your heart. But if you don't say the Ain properly, you don't say Ul Obdo means to serve, you say Ul Obdo means to get rid of God. Has the Shalom. Or towards the end of the Shema, Leman Tizkeru, for you to remember. If you say Leman Tishkeru, it means to become drunk. If it's Tizkeru, in order to lease, in order to rent. So you're changing the whole minute. For example, another Pasuk, Ul Item Oto. If you say it quick, Ul Item Oto, it means you will see in God's death. That's what you're saying. So you need to separate. Ul item oto. Bechol levabecha. Why? Because the two letters of the last letter of one word and the first letter of the next word are the same. And Keriyat Shema needs to have a certain amount of words and a certain amount of letters. That's the idea of the concept of Kavanah. There are many more Kavanah, but for to us, this is good. The next one, it says, when it comes to the Amida, the Amida, there are two paragraphs of the Amida that talk about this particular topic. For example, the Beracha of Barech Alenu and the Beracha of Teka Shofar. Now, where do you see in these two prayers the topic of Zera Levatala? So looks in the in the in the Barech Aleno and it says Kol Mine Mashhit Kol Mine Puranut Kol Mine Mashhit. What's Mashhit? Mashhit means a, a terrorist angel. And how that angel is created by Hashhatat Zera Levatala. That's the name of the sin. Hashhatat wasting. That's why there is a Torah prohibition called. Bal Tashhit, don't be wasteful. There is a prohibition from the Torah that you're not allowed to knock down a tree that provides fruits. Because if you do it, you're killing the tree. That's called Bal Tashhit. So in the sin of Zera Levatala, the prohibition actually is called Hashhatat. Zera Levatala. So a sin of Hashhatat creates a, a Malach called Mashhit, a destroyer. Ah, once the destroyer is activated, the terrorist is activated, then the person receives pura anud, hardship in life. That's the beracha in Barech Arenu. Then you have the beracha of Teka uh, Beshofar. Besanes lekabetz galuyotenu. Bekabetzenu yahal. It says, God gather us from all over. What is this pasuk referring to? The surface means gather the Jewish people from exile. But Kabetzenu also refers to the sins of wasting Zera. Why the person wasted the Zera and the souls are roaming all over the world. So when we say the Kabetzenu Mehera, gather all these, in other words, from my Teshuvah, I want to, 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 to block these cells that are from Tum'ah of affecting me. So in these two prayers, <coughs> says Rehaim Padachi, in Barech Aleno and Teka Shofar, and not only that, there is a pasuk that you should say, Rashetevot Habu, Hail Bala Baikienu, Mibito Yerishno Yerishenu El, Hail Bala, the Tum'ah absorb my strength, the Zera, Baikienu, and reverse it. Mibitno, from the womb, from the area of the person. So that pasuk, he should have in mind to retrieve the seeds of Zera. Obviously, 
you know, you may say, Rabbi, I want to take notes. Some Sidurim do bring this in the, in the fine print, it says, but definitely you know the Berachot to look for. Another one, they Yishtadel Besisit, make sure the word Sisit, but make sure that the Sisit is Kasher. Make sure the Talet is Kasher. Because the Talet, says the Benishai, becomes all Makif. The Talet becomes a surrounding light of godliness. So when a person wears the Talet or the Sisit Katan, as we learned last week, the Zehud, how the person wears the Sisit Katan all day long, even without a kippah, that brings a tremendous amount of protection to the person. Also, it says, uh, wrapping the tefillin. Now, you may say, what's the big deal? Who does not wrap the tefillin? I hope people wrap the tefillin. But I will tell you that sometimes people borrow the tefillin of the synagogue. And you know how do we find them the next day? Mm -hmm. Not wrapped inside the bag, like if it's a garlic, or if it's a cloves in a, in a gift bag. They just put it back, heck, no. It says, look what it says here. Wrapping your tefillin with your hands, it repairs the sin of the hand of wasting zera. So you may ask yourself, I don't understand. How can you waste zera with your hand? Do you need me to explain to you how to do that? Thank you. Thank God. Thank God. So it says, the hands help the, the, the avon of zera. The hands also have tum'ah. So how do I purify this besides going to the mikveh? Besides praying, it says when you use your hands to do a mitzvah, you wrap the tefillin in a proper way, that also brings a great tikkun. Talit. Additionally, talet also. But with the talet we mentioned before. Number seven, it says, don't miss any opportunity to recite amen properly. If you engage in conversation, for sure you're missing Ameni. So they have said, make sure, as we said before, don't talk, don't talk listen to the Kaddish, listen to the Hazara, answer the Amen properly. You know, talking about the Hazara, sometimes people ask why I pray and my answers are not delivered. I pray with a Minyan. And last Sunday you told us that if you pray with a Minyan, the Tefillah gets delivered. Sure, as long as you don't talk. If you talk, your tefillah gets blocked. Why? Because the hazara is what delivers the prayer. The hazara, the repetition that the hazan does, and we say it, that is that gives the final delivery package. In other words, you send the letter, but it doesn't reach the destination. It gets stuck in the mailbox. How many times you press send and the email was left in draft? So your prayer stays in draft mode. That's basically what's written. What is in between? Yeah, no, nishtahi, nishtahi. In English they say, nishtahi, no nishtahi. That's it. Not here, not there. So it says in Ishai that answering the Amen in the Hazara and listening to the Hazara, obviously, is what really delivers the prayer. And also make the effort to recite Birkat Hamazon from the book. Make sure you hear, your ears are able to listen to the Birkat Hamazon. And as the way the Lecha writes, saying it with Simcha. Uh, now, number eight, you'll be surprised. And for many years, for many years, I thought that there was a typo in the book. And I realized that there was no typo in the book. What? I want to explain now. Mm -hmm. So it says, number eight, eat le'echol shi'ur hamotzi. Now, what I thought, and you look, at the, I have the book, and they have the marking on the book. I put an I, I crossed it out after. This, is, this was written maybe 10 years ago. Maybe more. I put a question mark. What does it mean? So first I put an ayin. Shi'ur. In my limited knowledge, I said, oh, maybe he's telling me when you eat bread, make sure to eat a shi'ur of bread. Because if you, let's say, 
say hamosi, and you did not eat at least a kazait of bread, you cannot say birkat hamazon. So I thought, and then what happens? You say birkat hamazon, you say berachale batala, because you did not eat enough bread. So one rule, you need to remember this. Whenever you make a mozi, immediately try to eat in the next few moments the ounce of bread, kazait of bread. This was me, Yosef Galimidi, understanding what the behind Balach is trying to say. But then I read further research, and you know what this means? Eating the breadcrumbs of bread. Eating the breadcrumbs of bread. I saw some people doing it, and I really didn't understand why. Then I did research, and I found out exactly what he says. The same way we mentioned in the night, in one of the classes of Tubi Shvat, that we discussed that when a person recites the Berachot on the fruit and the seeds that the, the fruit has, it's able to repeat, to repeat, to, 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 to ken the avon of wasting seed, because Zera has three meanings now. Zera has the seed from the Mila, Zera means your children, and Zera means the seed of the fruit. All of them means the same thing at the end. But it says, eating the breadcrumbs. <coughs> Unbelievable. And probably the reason why he says this is because the breadcrumbs are so minuscule, like the amount of Zera. For stays very deep. Yeah. Now, let's clarify. That doesn't mean that now this Shabbat come, I do this by the way. I do, personally I do this for years, to eat the breadcrumbs, okay? And I know, I know, I saw someone who has, and my wife will tell you, yeah, my husband eats the crumbs. And especially if we have a challah that makes a lot of crumbs, sometimes the challah makes a lot of crumbs, she knows, save all the crumbs in one plate. No, forget Ashi. That's also yeah. a benefit, but especially for this type of the Shobavim. Number nine, I'll do maybe five more very quickly, because these things we are doing them already. We need to do them proper. Number nine, my Maharonim. My Maharonim, Hova. What's the meaning of the word Hova? Must. Must. Obligation. Obligation. I'm going to tell you a secret today. Hova is the name of a certain Tum'ah. Mal'ach. Mal'ach that distributes impurity. And that's why I'm giving your share. So it says, make sure to do my Maharonim before we cut Amazon, not on the floor. Right, because you think you step on it. Because you step on it, you're stepping on Tum'ah. To, no, don't do the washing and the water should drop on the floor. Do my Maharonim like we do here, on a Kelly. With a yeah. cup on yeah. a kelly. Even if you don't have any uh, zimur? Of course, yes. because uh, my maharanim, By it's imp imperative to yeah. say, yeah. and I tell you, Hidush, that is Hacham Obadiah Yosef, that let's say that you said Birkat Amazon, and you did not do my maharanim. You know what he says? Do my maharanim after Birkat Amazon. Oh. Hidush. Okay. Yes. Because you, can, if you, you, you can't mess up the, the, the Maim Achronim. You can't mess Maim up. Maim Achronim, Maim Achronim, Maim Achronim means Choba. mandatory. Before, if not before, after. But yes, make sure you must do it. it. Why? Why? Because the Maim Achronim removes an, an impurity of the hands. Now, what impurity your hands have? You did netila to eat bread. You wash your hands. So your hands are clear and pure. So why Tum'ah in your hands? Because if you ate in a way connected to Isav rather than connected to Yaakov, now your hands are temea. Like we mentioned before in the Shovavim. What did he say? Wrap your tefillin. Make sure to do netila properly. Because the hands are the partner of the Avon of Zera Levatala. If it's an accident, maybe it's caused by the hand. If it's done in purpose, it's definitely caused by the hand. So the hands are a partner in crime. So therefore, the Tum'ah lingers on the hand. Next, observing the Shabbat properly. 
and enjoying the Shabbat according to your means. In other words, honor the Shabbat by welcoming the Shabbat on a timely manner, by not running away from Shabbat. Another one, dressing properly in honor of Shabbat. And I don't mean jeans, or torn Shabbat. jeans, or a t-shirt. Watch Shabbat. Shabbat. You watch Shabbat. Shabbat, you need to have more presentable, I don't care how much you pay for the jeans. Yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. During the week, I, we can change. But for Shabbat, come presentable to the synagogue. Additionally, uh, to observe the Shabbat to the best of your abilities. Not running away from Shabbat. Another one he says, increase in the lighting of the candles in honor of Shabbat. I'm not telling anyone to change their minhad. The, the basic protocol of the candles is to light two candles. Two candles, Zahor Beshamor. Then you can light additional candles the way we discussed a few weeks ago. Try to go up to the Sefer Torah. Because when you go up to the Sefer, your Neshama gets a boost of Kedusha. That's why it's called Aliyah La Torah. Going up to the Torah. Why? The Torah doesn't lower to you. The Torah, you need to climb the way the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot writes, Un Karevan La Torah. You bring people closer. I had a situation a few weeks ago that I'm fuming. Why? That I'm fuming about what a certain rabbi did. No comments. Yeah. This is my way of releasing yeah. my anger <laughs> on this individual. And I spoke to him. Nothing immoral, nothing wrong, but I quoted to him the Mishnah that says, your mission is to elevate people to the Torah. Your mission is not to lower the standards of the Torah to accommodate the person. Right. Okay, you say right. But people don't do it anymore. Many people he did it. Today. He's not a pulpit rabbi, relax. Give us an example. Not affiliated for any synagogue. Mm -hmm. So rabbi, let's say you have a... You miss a day and the, 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 you invite somebody to a Torah and the guy refuses, but it's possible. So that's a different question, not relevant to the topic. Okay. I can make the effort of answering this question <laughs> when I finish happens. the next two messages. Because the next three of two messages, we do this. We do this already. The next one, so we mention about uh, going to the Sefer once a month. Try. You can speak to the Mesader and he'll help you. Number 13, reciting Berich Sheme properly. When we open the Echal, on Shabbat and Yom Tov, we recite Berich Sheme. Berich Sheme originates from the Zohar Kadosh in Perashah Bayakel. It's a very powerful prayer, but it's a prayer that carries hidden messages. That's why if you ever are honored to do the opening of the ark on Shabbat and Yom Tov, and I usually I stand next to you, what is my automatic action? Give him a card. Hazaku Baruch. I give him a card. I don't give him a donation card. Berich <laughs> Shemek card. Yes. In English. Yes. Right, the English translation. So when the person is saying the Berich Shemek, at least has a clue. He knows what what are you saying? It's in Aramaic. It's in Aramaic. It's better to say in a language that you understand? Repeat that again. It's better to say in a language that you understand English. At least read it with your eyes. Yeah, English is good. But many people who go up have difficulty in reading so fast in Aramaic. I say it on a regular basis, so Baruch Hashem, I can do it. And some people can do it, but not everybody can do it. So at least, you know, you, instead of standing like a statue, you know, read the English. And more than one time they tell me, wow, I didn't know the power of this blessing. So I'm going to tell you two secrets. Number one, one that is not a secret because you heard this from me in the past, that the moment that the Petihata Echal is taking place, is one of the holiest moments of the prayer, together with Birkat Kohanim and together when we recite the Amida. The Amida. The Amida is your personal date with God. Birkat Kohanim, God Kabyachol, it's coming down to the room to bless us, the audience, in the merit of the blessing of the Kohanim. That's why the Kohanim cover the head with the talit, they extend the hands. 
That motion means that they are expanding the hand, the blessing, ba'ani abarechem, the blessing that Hashem is giving them, and that us. And the third one is the opening of the echal. Ba'ani tefillati. Beautiful. Now, huh? Modim is important. Modim is gratitude. That's a different ballgame. This opening of the ark, Berich Shemei, you blessing God. Berich Shemei de Mani Alma, Berich Yitra Yatra. Now, there is a secret. Is also you do it? No, only Shabbat and holidays. Neither. Syrian tradition, Syrian tradition, Syrian tradition, only Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh. Other Sephardic tradition do it on Rosh Chodesh. Now, what's so special about this prayer? I remember reading this many years ago, that it says as follows. This prayer contains, if I recall, 130 words. 130 words. Now, why specifically Berich Sheme has a connection with the Shobabim. So we need to understand where in the Torah we find the number 130. Short answer, Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon was created. Adam Arishon married Hava. Adam Arishon married, had Cain and Abel on the same day. Adam Arishon sinned with his wife. The Avon of Esadah, the sin of Adam Arishon. The moment that that sin took place, Adam Arishon separated from his wife for 130 years. That's why if you look in Perashah Bereshit, it says, when Adam became 130 years old, he became the father of Shet, the third son of Adam and Hava. So they had Cain and Hevel. Cain killed Hevel. Then 130 years of tikkun for the sin that they did, and after 130 years later, they became he became the father of Shet. So in these 130 years, according to the holy books, the deep holy books, Adam Arishon had certain spiritual challenges, because according to the holy books, what prompted the jealousy of the snake? against Adam and Hava, the act of intimacy. The act of intimacy created a jealousy on the snake. He couldn't stand that, and he caused the sin. But during these 130 years of separation from his wife, Adam had a couple of challenges related to the topic of Shovavim. It's too difficult to say this, or even to explain this, but that's what's written in the holy books. So therefore, the prayer of Erich Sheme was composed to be metaken, that great chapter in the life of Adam Arishon. So therefore, it says behind Parachi, when we say this chapter of Erich Sheme, it gives us the same tikkun like Adam Arishon. That's why it's important not to speak during Petihat Echad. Not only because of Erich Sheme. But I'm what? telling you, God is in front of you. And yeah, a lot of people do it anyway. That's why often we listen, we see, Baruch Hashem, that people are receptive and are listening and are praying. But occasionally, you see me, I'm about to start the Berich Sheme, and I cannot hear myself. So I pause for a few seconds, and usually people get the message, Baruch Hashem, and I continue with the prayer. One more, I will finish with this one. And this is something that you should do every time. Look at the Sefer Torah. When the Sefer Torah comes from the Hechal, our Sephardic tradition is that we show the Sefer Torah. When we come out the, from the Hechal, we carry the Sefer Torah open, and you see that sometimes when the Sefer comes to the Teva, they do Bezot Torah, Marea Ketab. This is called the Galacha, Marea Ketab. What's so special about the need of doing this, of carrying the Sefer open? Short answer, to give you and me and everyone in the audience an opportunity to look at the Sefer Torah and finding a word that begins with the first letter of your, of your first name. 
So if your name happens to be Moshe, it's very easy to find. Yeah. If your name happens to be Abraham, sometimes yes, sometimes you look for the word Aleph. Very easy. Very easy. If your name is, uh, for example, uh, how do I, which give me a difficult name, uh, Matityahu. You look for a word that begins with a mem. In other words, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Your name is Moshe, Aharon, Abraham, Ishaq, Yaakov, yes. Moshe, Yosef, or Ishaq, for example, are easy to find. But even if you don't find, says behind Palachi, look for a word of the Sefer Torah that begins with the letter of your first name. And what's so special? The Benishai called this Ha'arat Hanefesh. You bring like additional lightning and holiness to your Neshama. Now, concerning the question that he asked, <coughs> we'll continue by Zeta Hashem tomorrow because we do have an additional 20 or 30 additional steps. But he asked a question, what happens if the Gabbai invites you and refusing going up to the Sefer? So I give you the short answer. It is not appropriate or beneficial to the person to refuse an Aliyah to the Sefer Torah. That's why in the Sephardic tradition, we don't call by name. In the Ashkenazic tradition, they say, Ya'amod, Moshe ben Abraham, Shlishi, but usually, usually they let you know in advance. So the basic answer to you is as follows. Better not to refuse. But let's say that you need an Aliyah next Shabbat, not this Shabbat. So politely you can tell the Gabbai, I would love to go up, but I'd rather go next week than I have your time. Right. That's not a halachic problem at all. Yeah. So let's say somebody doesn't have your time, and you invite, you the Gabbai invites somebody to a Torah, and, uh, I repeat, it is not appropriate to refuse an aliyah to the Sefer. Mm -hmm. If you have an opportunity to go, go. go. That's it. Go. I said that, Rabotai? As we, that's why I said, that's why I have it in English. I have it in English, so the person... Because it's a, it's a, it comes from the Zohar Kadosh, and it's such a powerful prayer that the Aramaic prayers have an extra layer of protection that Malachim cannot affect it. That's what's written in the Holy Books. Thank you, everybody, for your sponsorship. Chazak Reimaz. Baruch Adonai Le'Aolam. Amen, Amen. Rebi Hananiyah Menakashiyah Omer. Ratzak Kadosh Baruch Hu Lezakot